Hallelujah. At this time, we will dismiss the classes to their classes. Amen. And I'm opening the Word of God. Amen. To the book of Romans, chapter number 12. Amen. And uh, we'll begin to read with verse number 1. Romans chapter 12 and beginning to read with verse number 1. Hallelujah. I thank God for His Word. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a powerful Word. Amen. Other, other books will come and go. But the Word of God will always remain true and will always be able to be used. Hallelujah. I have confidence in the Word of God. I believe, I believe that this Word, amen, is the final Word. It is not just any Word. Amen. If it's not in this book, then uh, all other books uh, are, are failures. Amen. It's got to line up with this book. Hallelujah. Because it's what God said. And when God makes, it, makes a, a, a command or a statement, amen, we know that it will be all right. Romans chapter 12 and verse number 1 said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Amen. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. And by the help of the Lord, I'm going to speak about a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. Lord Jesus, I know that your word is anointed. I pray, O oh God, that as your word is anointed, that same anointing would fall heavy upon us here today. You would touch every heart and every life that is in this place. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be seated. Thank you for standing in honor to the Word of God. Hallelujah. Sacrifices to God uh, and by God have originated from the very beginning of time. It was, uh, it was Adam and Eve's failure in the garden and sin in the garden that started the first sacrifice. And, uh, and that one sacrifice, amen, was for the covering of their sin. One man's disobedience, sin into, into the world, and then death by sin is what the scripture said. And from that time of Genesis chapter number 3, where God took, the, uh, to, took an animal and slew him for the offering of a sacrifice, amen, it set a precedent that there would be uh, at some time in history that they may not have understood a time when there would be the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus Christ at Calvary. Amen. What a tremendous price that he paid when he gave his life for us at Calvary. I thank God for that. Hallelujah. When Noah stepped off the ark, again, the Bible talks about there being the offering, uh, an offering that was given unto God. Amen. And God, after that offering, gave the promise by, see my bow in the sky, I won't destroy the world by water again. It was, as we mentioned in another, in another message just recently, amen, it was Abraham and Isaac that went to the top of the mount, and, Abra and Isaac said, Dad, we have the fire and we have the wood, but where is the lamb to offer? It was an understood that there be a sacrifice Amen. In the, to give to God whenever we operate in worship to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. 
As I journey through the passages of Scripture, I find, amen, according to the book of 1 Samuel, that kings were chosen when sacrifices were given. For instance, amen, when Saul was chosen to be king, amen, he came to the place where Samuel was, and the day before the sacrifice, God had spoken to Samuel and said, Tomorrow there will be a man that comes, and this is the man that will be chosen to be the next king or the king over Israel. It was in that sacrifice that Saul just happened to stumble into the camp. No, it was according to the plan of God that it happened on a certain day at a certain time after the sacrifice was complete. Amen. When David was chosen to be the next king over Israel, again the scripture said that God spoke to Samuel and he said the way that the king will be chosen is you're going to the house of Jesse and you're going to say, I go, amen, to sacrifice unto God. And while you're there, you will find the next king. Amen. Can I tell you, amen, that when we begin to sacrifice to God a living sacrifice, it's then that we find the only king. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Saul and David have long gone from the earth, but there is a king of kings and a lord of lords who reigns supreme, amen, and I'm glad that I know him as Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah, amen. When I, when I stepped beyond that, I stepped into the book of 2 Samuel, amen, and, uh, and I found that David had numbered the children of Israel. And uh, after he numbered the children of Israel, being disobedient to God, amen, God began to bring judgment upon Israel. And David said, I've got to find a place to sacrifice. And he went to, amen, the top of a hill, and there he found, amen, a mill that, uh, where they ground mill, and he purchased that. And uh, when he purchased that, the man said, you can just have it for your sacrifice. Amen. And he said, David said, how can I offer God that which costs me nothing? I've got to be willing to pay a price in order to, for it to be a true sacrifice. I've got to be willing to give something beyond just that normal Amen. Whatever it takes, I've got to push myself beyond that. Amen. In order for it to be a sacrifice. I wonder today, amen, before I go on, I wonder, have I and have we really sacrificed to God? I'm not talking about lambs and bullocks. I'm not talking about offering, amen, a bird as a sacrifice. But I wonder how much sacrifice we have given to God. For the writer said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice unto God which is your reasonable service. Amen. It's time that I would say to my flesh, flesh, you've had enough, amen, things for yourself. Now, flesh, it's time that we give something to God. I'm going to give him my praise. I'm going to give him my worship. I'm going to give him my life. Fully and completely. There's nothing withheld. But I'm going to present my body. A living sacrifice. Unto God. Holy and acceptable unto him. Which is my reasonable service. Oh hallelujah. Amen. The book of Second Chronicles chapter number 7. Amen. Starts out. Amen. As we, uh, as we know the story, De Solomon has 
built the temple for God to dwell in. And now, amen, it's time for the dedication of the temple. Amen. And in chapter number 7 of 2 Chronicles and verse number 1, we read these words. And when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven, consuming the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Can I say that when we offer a sacrifice to God, it's then that the fire of God can come. Amen. For he's always pleased with whatever sacrifice that I give to him. He'll always be pleased as long as it's dedicated solely and completely to God. Whatever I give, it will be pleasing to him if I say, God, I'm going to give you my all and God will be pleased with him, with that sacrifice. Amen. And he will honor it with the fire of the Spirit of God touching our lives afresh and anew. The first thing that happened was an acceptance through the fire. The second thing that happened was the glory of God came down and was demonstrated in their midst. I say today that the more we sacrifice, the more God's glory can be demonstrated within our midst. I pray God somehow lead me that I would present my body a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto you which is my reasonable service. Praise the Lord. Amen. I read from the 12th verse of chapter number 7. Amen. These words. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said... Unto him, I have heard thy prayer. I have chosen, amen, this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. He said, amen, I, you built this house, amen, and I have chosen this place as a place for sacrifice. I have chosen the house of God to be a house of sacrifice. Amen. I, I say to us today, the house of God can never be a house, amen, of just opportunity where we come when we feel like it and when we don't come when we don't feel like it. But the house of God was designed and dedicated as a house of sacrifice. Amen. I may not always feel like being in the house of God. I may not always feel like blessing the Lord when I get here. But oh, hallelujah, what blessings come whenever I find myself in the house of God and say, I've come to bless him. I've come to praise the name of the Lord. How many times has those have we been tired and weary and we've come to the house of the Lord and God God has answered us in a powerful way. Oh, hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord here today. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. I praise your name, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. He said, I have chosen this house as a house, amen, of sacrifice. If you pass on down, amen, into verse number 13, he said, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, if I command the locusts to devour the land, or send a pestilence among my people, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Hallelujah. I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And now mine eyes shall be opened and mine ears attend under the prayer that is made in this place. Hallelujah. I know that God can hear my prayer when I'm going down the road. I know that God will hear me at my house. But somehow there's something to be said about the house of God. 
God. Amen. Where we gather together as a, gr- as a group of people. Amen. When we join together collectively and we begin to pray, something begins to happen. His ear is attentive. His eye is upon us and he hears from heaven. He will forgive and he will heal our land. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. In this house, amen, that is a house of sacrifice. Amen. In the book of Kings, the first book in the 18th chapter, we read, amen, it was the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. And at that offering of the evening sacrifice, Elijah had stopped the prophets of Baal and he said, it's my turn now. They had spent their time doing whatever they were doing, jumping and cutting themselves with knife, and nothing ever happened. Amen. But it was time for the sacrifice. And when the sacrifice, amen, was offered, then it was then that Elijah said, I first rebuild the altar, then I'll put the sacrifice on the altar. And as I put the sacrifice on the altar, I'm going to call out unto the Lord in prayer. And when he finished his prayer, after the sacrifice had been offered, amen, the the fire of the Lord fell, consuming the sacrifice, wood, stones, amen, the water that was in the trench, and the dust as well. And the people began to cry out, the Lord, he is the God. I want us to know that when we sacrifice, we can expect, Amen. Our God to answer by fire and revival starts. Hallelujah. When we sacrifice, Lord, lead me. Hallelujah. To present my body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is my reasonable service. The book of Isaiah 56. Amen. Ties prayer to the sacrifice. Amen. In Isaiah 56 and and verse number 7. Hallelujah. I'd get a, get a hold of the page, but I'd like to read it to you. A passage that even that uh, we sometimes have heard quoted from the New Testament. Amen. But I'd like to read it from the Old for just a minute. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain. I will make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be acceptable upon my altar. For my house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. He said, when you offer your sacrifice in my house of prayer, amen, it will be an accepted all it will be an accepted sacrifice it's for that reason that when we when we have sinned that we call amen and when anyone has sinned we call for a time amen of individuals coming to an altar I don't know how many times and how many people, amen, have knelt before this altar or this altar at the front of the church or somewhere standing in a pew, amen. But they have been in the house of God, and as they have been there, they have said, God, I've made a mess of my life. I've had this heartbreak and I've done this and I've done this and I'm asking you, God, to forgive me of my sins. And I'm asking you, God, somehow I I feel so ashamed perhaps of what I've done in my past. I'm coming to you broken. I have not committed the way that I should. Would you hear me, God? And all of a sudden, we watch a man as the God that we serve reaches down and touches us in such a powerful way. Oh, hallelujah. Can I tell you, when we offer a sacrifice of repentance, God will always hear, hallelujah, the prayer and the sacrifice of somebody that says, I messed up again, God. Would you forgive me one more time? Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Have you ever found it to be true that when you repented, the power and presence of God has been there 
to forgive. Oh, hallelujah. I'm thankful for a place where sacrifice can be brought. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. The tears that come in sacrifice, all of a sudden, amen, there's, there's something that happens on the inside of a man. There may be tears of sorrow and tears of pain, but when the sacrifice of repentance is given, if my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked way, I will hear from heaven. Heaven, and I will, hallelujah, forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. It's a sacrifice that sparked the, amen, sparked the heart of God, amen, so that he would forgive, so that he would heal, hallelujah, and so that he would bring a restoration. And the Apostle Paul, reaching through the centuries, said, I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God, I'm reaching to you by God's mercy. I'm telling you that his mercy is attached, hallelujah, to the sacrifice that you would present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. From that point, Ezra, Ezra chapter number 6, amen, and, uh, and, and verse number 3, back a few back a few books, and I'm hoping that I can find that one a little quicker. Amen. And uh, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. <laughs> you got it behind me. Thank you very much. Let's go to verse 3. In the first year of, of Cyrus the king, the same Cyrus the king made a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Let the house be builded, the place where they offered sacrifices. Let the foundations thereof be strongly laid. Amen. He said, let the house be builded where they offer sacrifices. Let the foundations be strongly laid. He said, my, my desire is that there be a house rebuilt. Amen. A place where they can offer sacrifices. Drop down to verse number 10, amen, of that same chapter. And let's read that one. That they may offer sacrifices, amen, of sweet savors unto the God of heaven. And pray for the life of the king and of his sons. The king said, the reason I want the house built is because there needs to be a sacrifice. The reason there needs to be a sacrifice is because I need somebody to pray for me. I need somebody to pray for my family and until amen, the house is built until the sacrifice is given I can't have prayer and I can't have the blessing let the building re be rebuilt and let the sacrifice begin so that there can be the blessing of God fall upon us again I say the house is built. Let the sacrifice begin because when the sacrifice comes, look out. You ain't never seen a blessing like you getting ready to see when there's a sacrifice of your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Hallelujah. And sometimes folks are afraid whenever you start talking about sacrifice, amen, because they think the next thing you're reaching for is an offering plate. But that's not what the Scripture is talking about in this passage. It's not talking about how much you give in the offering plate. It's your body that he's worried about. It's what you do with your life that he's concerned about. Present your body a living sacrifice. Hey, it's not easy getting our carcass out of bed on a Sunday morning whenever, whenever it's my day off. And I, <laughs> I, 
I, I, I'll be real honest. If it wasn't for the presence of the Lord and being in his house, amen, is something that I love to do. I wouldn't want to be just get up on my day off early. I mean, it's my day off. I'd like to sleep in like the rest of y'all. But there's something about saying, God, I, I, you know, this is a part of my sacrifice. I'm here in sacrifice. You know what? Now, not once I get here, and it's a sacrifice to get here. God says, "Now that you got here, let's 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 do a little bit more sacrifice. Come on, you can do a little bit more." And again, I, I'm leaving the offering pan out of it. I wonder what we could do for sacrifice unto God. I I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You ought to serve God. You ought to sacrifice for Him. When I think back of all He's done for me, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, hallelujah, and all that he's done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah, thank God for saving me. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. The apostle Paul said it this way. He said, I am a debtor. I owe everything to him. Hallelujah. Amen. So whenever, uh, whenever the trial would come, Amen. When everything that he faced would come against him, the Apostle Paul would say, I owe it all to Jesus, and I really can't give him enough, but I'll keep on sacrificing. I'm going to keep on giving because I'm trying my best to somehow pay back a debt, and it's a living sacrifice that's pleasing unto God. Can you give me the book of Nehemiah chapter 12? Amen. Nehemiah chapter 12 and verse number 43. Hallelujah. Amen. There's that little book that's hidden in there and I'm having trouble finding them. Nehemiah chapter 12 and verse 43. Also at that day, they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced. For God had made them rejoice with great joy. The wives also and the children rejoiced so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard even afar off. Can I tell you that sacrifice brings joy? When you truly sacrifice to God, it might be painful for the moment, Amen. It might be just a little bit of embarrassment for the moment whenever I begin to worship Him. Amen. But all oh, the joy that comes when somebody says, I'm going to sacrifice. Amen. You experience that when you first touch the throne of God. Amen. In repentance. Amen. There was something that happened and it brought joy to you. Amen. Can I say that God isn't done giving you joy? He just wants us to sacrifice just a little bit more. Push beyond where we've been. Push beyond our yesterdays and say, God, I'm giving you more today that I did yesterday. I'm going to pour out my life to you. Hallelujah. Amen. I may not feel like it. I may not want to, but it's a sacrifice and I'm going to put it to you. I'm going to give you all that I have. Hallelujah. And as I begin to give to him my worship, my prayer, my praise, hallelujah, my life. Amen. Suddenly something begins to happen and rejoicing shall shows up and joy amen begins to take place within my life and the Bible said God made them rejoice hallelujah it's not a joy that comes for the momentary thrill of sin it's not a joy that comes just because there's been a little bit of pleasure in our life it's not a funny joke but it's something that's deeper than that Hallelujah. Amen. I, I remember there was a, uh, there was a Canadian fellow 
uh, that uh, had come and preached in, in North Dakota when I was a kid. And uh, his, his uh, sense of humor uh, was pretty dry. I don't think, uh, I doubt very seriously he'd ever got real excited his whole life. Uh, he was he was just this just as sweetest fellow that you'd ever meet. Well, I don't think he ever got excited, but he stood there in the in the uh, in the pulpit that day, and he just said, "I'm excited." You couldn't have heard it in his voice, but you could see it in his life. You understand what I'm saying? His life, amen, was a life of sacrifice. He had given, amen, to the kingdom of God. And he said, I'm excited living for God. What he was saying was, as I've learned the key somewhere along the line, whenever I start sacrificing unto God, amen, it's nothing but a reasonable service, amen, but as I serve him, the more that I serve him, hallelujah, the sweeter he grows. Oh, hallelujah. The more that I put my life in his hands, amen, the more joy that I have. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Brother Sletton, amen, came down to the front of the church. He had never been in an apostolic church before in his life. And his wife, amen, for se of several years, was down receiving the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And on that Sunday morning, or on that, uh, on that night service as she was receiving the Holy Ghost, he came down and began to watch, amen, her experience the presence of the Lord for perhaps the first time in her life and uh, and he fell to his knees and he had told my father I'm, a, I'm an unemotional man I don't get excited about anything else but when he dropped to his knees that day that old boy that didn't know how to get emotional began to laugh and man harder and fun. it started from you know just really gradual ha 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 <laughs> and then he couldn't stop it and next thing you know he was speaking in a heavenly language as the spirit gave the utterance afterwards he testified and he said when I asked my, my wife to marry me I saw a happy lady when she walked down the aisle I saw a happy lady Amen. when she gave birth to each of our children she was a happy lady but when she was filled with the Holy Ghost I had never seen her happier in all of her life. What am I talking about? I'm talking about when you sacrifice to God, there's a joy that God can give. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> one of my cousins decided to hop out of one of those planes with that parachute skydiving. And there was a picture of her and jumping out there, and I thought, there ain't no way I'd ever be up that high and jumping out no plane. There ain't no way I'm going to take my chances that way. You know, and, uh, but she did that, and, and, and it gave a momentary thrill. I don't know how much she paid for that one trip. But she didn't experience in that trip what we can experience when we come into the house of the Lord and we begin to worship Him. If I had my way, if they, could, if they could put me on the shore and let me catch a great, I mean, I'm talking a great big fish, you know, three, four hundred, five hundred pounds. You know, let me, let, me, let me play with it for four or five hours and let me wear myself slap out. It would make me happy. But the pleasure that I could have in catching a fish that big would no way compare to the joy that God can give. What I'm talking about is when we, amen, begin to sacrifice. I'm going to give to you, God. 
I'm going to love you, God. I don't care about anything else. Oh, hallelujah. I'm just going to give to you. Amen. And I'm going to worship you. And when we do that, something begins to happen. And the Lord says, amen. The, the scripture said, he gave, made them rejoice. He said, since you started it, I'm going to finish it. You started out just being a little bit happy, but I'm going to finish it off with you rejoicing. Hallelujah. In a celebration like you ain't never experienced in your life. I listened to somebody uh, at my work that had come in there and said, well, how did you feel about the election? And I refused to comment on elections, but I just, but he said, whenever, this fella said, whenever I found out Trump had won, I jumped up and down. I yelled like I was at the Super Bowl. You know what? He, he got excited over four years of a man's life. Oh, Hallelujah. But when somebody is baptized in the precious name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, and filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, ain't no celebration like that celebration. Hallelujah. You're not celebrating four years, but you're celebrating eternity. You're celebrating somebody coming into the kingdom of God. Amen. And there's nothing quite like it in all of the world. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I just, I, I am so thankful, amen, that I have the privilege, amen, to sacrifice unto him. Present my body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Amen. I got to hurry here because it just, time flies and I, and I get, get going. And, and I want to read to you from the book of Psalms, chapter 118. Now, this tells us, Amen. The way that the sacrifice was 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 made, Amen. In uh, in the Old Testament, Amen. Psalms 118 and verse number 27. <clears throat> God is the Lord which hath showed us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar. So in other words, what they did with this sacrifice in the Old Testament, they offered a lamb or whatever that they were offering. And, uh, and instead of just setting it there on the altar, they would bind it and they would tie it to the altar so that it couldn't get off of the altar. They would tie it there because it would be in the nature of the beast to say, I don't want to be here. You, you, you follow where I'm at? And, uh, and they would tie that, that, uh, that lamb or whatever, they would bind it with cords to the horns of the altar. He said, this is, this is how it goes. You offer the sacrifice and you tie it, amen, to the horns of the altar. Let it stay, amen, tied to the horns of the altar. Don't, don't just lay it up there, but you tie it to the horns of the altar. If you carried on a little bit farther, amen, if somebody had done wrong, the Bible said that what they were to do if they, if they wanted mercy is they were to run to the altar and they were to grab a hold of the horns of the altar. Not crawl on top of it, but they were to grab those horns of the altar. And many individuals found mercy because they clung to the horns of the altar. They attached themselves. They tied themselves. Hallelujah. Amen. To the part of the altar. Amen. That was designed to hold the sacrifice there. Paul said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. Amen. In other words, what he was saying was, go put your body upon the altar. 
and don't just put it there, but you better tie it to the altar because your body is not wanting to be in a place of prayer. Your body is not wanting to be in a place, hallelujah, of sacrifice. It'll want to get up and take you anywhere but to the altar. But the apostle Paul said, I'm talking about mercy. If you want mercy, lay yourself upon the altar and tie yourself there and say, I'm not leaving this place of prayer. I'm not leaving a place until I get something from God. I'm going to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is my reasonable service. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, just a couple more verses and I'll, and I'll be done. Psalms 51. So how do I sacrifice? We're not talking about knives through the, through the heart or anything like that. But there must be a sacrifice. In, I, in Psalms 51, in verse number 16, it said, For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. But the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, thou wilt not despise. He said, if, I, if, if he asked me to bring a thousand lambs, uh, or if he asked me to bring this many oxen, because I'm king, I could afford to do that. But he doesn't ask me for what I can give financially. What he's asking for is that I would break my spirit. And instead of a prideful individual, that I would be broken in my spirit before him and that I would humble myself in his presence. A broken and a contrite heart, something that is humble before the presence of the Lord. He said, that's, that's, that's how you do it. In Psalms 107, in verse number 19. He said... Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. And he save, saveth them out of their distresses. He sent his, so, so listen to how it happens. He said they cried to the Lord in their trouble. When they were in trouble, they cried to him. And he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them. And delivered them from their distractions. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. For his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And declare his works with rejoicing. What we talk about when we talk about thanksgiving. Amen. This time of the year. Sometimes all we're talking about. And we've mentioned it in a couple of different services. But I, I, I feel it's important that we understand. There is a sacrifice to thanksgiving. We've got to be willing, amen, not just to say, yeah, I thank God for another day and now I'm on my way. But somehow there's got to be a sacrifice where we set our life into it. Where we put, amen, everything within us is saying, God, I'm thankful. I am so thankful. Hey, you woke me up this morning. I'm thankful. Amen. You started me on my way. I'm thankful. You've given me your mercy. I'm thankful. Hallelujah. You've given me your grace. I'm thankful. You shed your blood for me at Calvary. I'm thankful. You filled your, me with your spirit. I'm thankful. Hallelujah. You've given me another day to worship you. And I'm thankful for that. God, I'm going to put everything that I have, amen, into a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is my reasonable service. Now let's, let's go on down, amen, to Psalms, uh, uh, Psalms 116 and verse 1. Amen, Psalms 116 and, uh, and, and, and verse number 1, I love the Lord because he heard my voice and my supplications. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore I will call upon him as long as I live. The sacrifice to the Lord is a sacrifice, number one, of loving the Lord. Number two, it's a call unto him as long as I live. 
Verse number 9 said, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. It's a walk that is a daily walk, amen, walking before the Lord. In verse number 16, O Lord, truly I am thy servant, I am thy servant, and the son of thy handmaid, thou hast loosed me from thy bonds. So he said, number three, amen, I am a servant to the Lord. Amen. That's a part of the sacrifice. Amen. No, I'm not doing this to be seen. I'm not doing this because somebody else, amen, has asked me to do this. But I'm offering this because I am thy servant. I'm doing this because I'm serving you, God. I'm doing this, I'm living this life because I'm serving you. And in my service to you, I'm offering a sacrifice. In verse number 17, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Again, it's a sacrifice that he's saying. I'm coming into the place, amen, where I may not feel like thanking him, but I'm going to come anyway. Thank you, God, for all that you've done. Thank you, hallelujah, for the way that you've blessed. And I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord in the presence of his people, Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to do my part to sacrifice in every aspect of my life. I'm going to give everything that I have to you. Psalms 141 and verse number 2 is where we will close today. Amen. Psalms 141 and verse number 2. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense. And the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let my prayer come to you as the incense. God, I'm going to do this to you. It's not to be shown to men. But I love you. I worship you. Let this be as the evening sacrifice. I know there's times when we drop to our knees in prayer. But I wonder today if there's anybody as we stand together in this place. And we say, Lord, let my prayer be as the incense. God, I'm coming to you too. Let the lifting of my hand. Be as the evening sacrifice. I wonder if we could give, hallelujah, him a sacrifice. Hallelujah, Jesus. I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, to be transformed. God, I'm coming to you. Let's worship Him. Let's offer a sacrifice to Him. I love You, Jesus. I worship You, Lord. I magnify Your name.